Jeremiah chapter 22 Thus saith the Lord, Go down to the house of the king of Judah, and speak there this word. So Jeremiah is called all over. He's called to the kings, he's called to the priests, he's called to the people, he's called to the temple, he's gone to uh, Euphrates, and said, Hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah. Israel's gone. That's just Judah, the Southland. That sitteth upon the throne of David. David's throne is still there. Thou and thy servants and thy people that enter in by these gates. So he's at the gate. He's a street preacher. The gates were where the nobles sat, where it would be your kind of city hall kind of thing. You would go there and meet the judges. You go there and do business. The judges were there. Job sat there. Lot sat there. And this would be all the people coming in and out of the city. So they were great place to hear. Thus saith the Lord, Execute ye judgment and righteousness. So evidently, I guess there's no judgment going on. And there's no righteousness going on in the courts. That's why... He tells Jeremiah, go to the gate. The judges there are not doing right. And deliver the spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor. And then I guess the oppressors are getting the business. They're being allowed to oppress. And the oppress is when, when you, you, you squeeze all you can out of somebody. And do no wrong. Do no violence to the stranger. Uh-oh. How have they been treating people who are, who are Gentiles? And they come a long way. They're, they're just in this evilness. Wickedness. There's no justice. The guilty are being allowed to run the fatherless nor the widow well, what violence are they doing to the fatherless and the widow here are two groups of people that they can't the, the man in the house has died neither shed innocent blood in this place murder The justice system in, in Judah is, is foul, and there's murder. If they had a chance, they would have killed Jeremiah by now. For if ye do this thing indeed, then shall there enter in by the gates of this, of this house, king sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, he and his servants and his people. If you do what thing indeed? If you do what you're supposed to be doing. Well, who comes to these gates or Babylon? The Chaldean army. So they don't do. I'll tell you the end of the book in the middle of the book. The kingdom will be gone. The houses will be gone. The walls will be gone. The gate will be gone. Nehemiah. Ezra. But, if you will not hear these words, this is what they do. They don't do verse 4, they do verse 5. I, God, swear by myself, saith the Lord, that this house shall become desolation. What house? He said the house of the king, verse 1. It's not the temple, this is the house of the king. The king's palace is going to be gone. For thus saith the Lord unto the king's house of Judah, Thou art Gilead unto me, and the head of Lebanon. Yet surely I will make thee a wilderness. No life, no living, and cities which are not inhabited. Think of uh, where that nuclear reactor Sherabom, or Sherabom, whatever, in Russia. The pictures that come up now, you know, 
all the apartment buildings, the playground, the amusement park, there's no one there. There's a picture that they show on someone's porch, their clothes are still hanging. There are books still in, in the desk of the classrooms in the school. That's what Israel is going to be pictured like. But you know what? You can go over that city there in Russia and you see the buildings. You go with Judah by the end of Jeremiah 52 and there's nothing. Nehemiah tells us. Not even buildings. I will prepare destroyers against thee, every one with his weapon, war, soldier. They shall cut down thy choice cedar and cast them into the fire. This is burning. Save the trees. And many nations shall pass by this city, Gentiles. And they shall say every one to his neighbor, Wherefore has the Lord done thus unto this great city? And they shall answer, the Gentiles shall answer, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God, and worship other gods and serve them. Even the heathen know what they're supposed to do. The heathen know more than the Jews. You're going to walk through Jerusalem, to Judah, so you know they don't get right themselves. Though here they see the utter destruction that God has pronounced upon His people, and yet they don't get right. Weep ye not for the dead, neither bemoan him, but weep sore for him that goeth away, for he shall return no more, nor see his native country. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Inigo never saw Judah and Jerusalem again. Now had Jeremiah, I mean Jeremiah, had Daniel a chance to go back? I don't know. Could Daniel go back? According to 22 verse 10? I don't think so. But then again, when you read Ezra and Nehemiah, there's a group of people that remember the first temple. So, this verse is wrong. The Bible is wrong. Yeah, but what has been the contents of 22 chapters of Jeremiah? Is Jeremiah speaking to those people that are doing right or those people that are doing wrong? As far as chapter 22, 22 chapters, what person besides Jeremiah have you seen do right? None. And he's speaking to the king and to the servants. Because we see where is, I'm looking for the verse. It says king and his servant. Verse 2. Thy, the king, thy servants, and thy people that enter in by these gates. I don't know if anybody could just enter in by the king gate. I know you can't just go walk up in the capitals of the world today and just, hey, I want to see the, the leader of this nation. Well, I don't think you could do it in Jerusalem's time. And if that's the case, and I could be wrong, if only certain people go through this gate, they're the ones not going to, the king ain't going to come back. And remember, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Inigo were of the king's sons. Why Daniel didn't come back, don't know. For thus saith the Lord, touching Shalom, the son of Josiah, king of Judah which reigned instead of Josiah his father, which went forth out of this place. So here's the gate. He's gone. Second Kings 23, 29. He shall not return thither anymore. So you're looking at the royalty. They're not coming back. Daniel was royalty. Hmm. 
And that's all I'm going to say because I don't know anything more. But he shall die in the place whether they had led him captive, Babylon, and shall see this land no more. You ain't coming back. The land that God says flows milk and honey, that is your land, you're leaving, and you're not coming back. Go unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness. Well, how do you build your house with unrighteousness? Steal, murder, lie, cheat, people, taxes, government, civil government, and federal government. There are people who built their houses and they've done it by unrighteousness. They didn't do it right. And his chambers by wrong. And that would be the bedroom, the kitchen, the living room. Not done by right. Done by wrong. That uses his neighbor's service without wages. He, they and his neighbor, that's the Jewish people, his own people, his brethren, maybe even even Gentiles. He's using the guy to work and he's not paying them. So, run back to verse 3 real quick. Thus say the Lord, execute ye judgment and righteousness, the unrighteousness that we saw, and deliver the spoil out of the hand of the oppressor, one of the old pressures is, hey, you're going to build for me and I ain't going to pay you. Small claims kind of court. I did this work for this guy and he didn't pay me for it, your honor. Yes or what? The guy's a high noble amongst the city and you think we're going to do something to him? That guy cuts our paycheck. That guy gives us certain benefits that you, the person, you don't get. You know, and giveth him not for his work. Now, I want to say a lot. I want to park myself in this verse, and I'm not going to, because I can make the verse read what it doesn't read. Because employers in America do pay their employees. But I will go far as to say that they don't pay them enough. And yet the employee agrees to the pay that the employer gives them. Now I can pervert the scripture, the scripture if I wanted to. But verse 13 says that he is not paying the guy. Now if you want to go to slavery... They gave him a house, they gave him food, they gave him clothing, they brought him to, as far as America, they brought him to the white man's church. Had to somehow take care of him when they were sick in such a way. But here is a guy in verse 13 absolutely not getting nothing for the work that he has performed. Nothing that uses his neighbor's service. And I don't want to park here. But the work has already been done. Use it. Now, I'm, again, I'm not going to read into the verse. I'm not going to say there was a contract or no contract. The neighbor did the service, what a contract or no contract, and he received nothing. That saith, I will build me a wide house and large chambers. Well, the money I save from paying the guy, I'll build a big place. And cutteth him out windows. And is sealed with cedar. That's expensive. And painted with vermilion. And that's a crimson, beautiful red color. Shout out rain. Wait a minute. 
who we've been talking about. We are talking about, and thus say the Lord, go down to the house of the king of Judah. We are talking about the king. He has used his people to build himself this house. And he didn't pay him. Shall thou reign because thou closest thyself in cedar? You know, you can't, no one else can come in. And not thy father eat and drink. What about the people that did the work? And do judgment and justice. And then it was well with thee. You eat and drink. But there is no judgment and justice going on. Shalt thou reign because thou closest thyself in cedar. Do not thy father eat and drink and do judgment and judgment. And then it was well with him. Who is the him? Shalt thou reign, that's the king, because thou the king closest thyself the king in cedar. Did not thy father, king's father, eat and drink, and do judgment and justice, and then it was well with him. Gotta be the king, he's sitting well. But he's not doing judgment and justice, because his neighbor has not been paid. And what Jeremiah is saying here, listen, if you would have paid your neighbor, paid him for the work, you would be in this home, your father would be eating and drinking in your home, and it would be well. And it's not. He judged the cause of the poor and needy when it was well with him. Was not this to know me, saith the Lord. There was a time that for God seeking God that they were doing right. They were taking care of the poor and the needy. Why do you got to judge the poor and needy? I'll tell you how you judge the poor and needy. Can I have a couple dollars for a hamburger or a drink? Sure. Yeah, all right. Let's go, in this, let's go in this convenience store and I'll buy you a sandwich and I'll buy you a drink and, and a bag of chips. Well, no. I'd rather have the money. No. I'll go in the convenience store. You get a you get yourself a sandwich, and chips, and a drink, whatever I said, I forgot to count. And I'll buy you a meal. Well, no, no, no. Can I just have the money? Now, see, you are judging the guy because he does not want a meal. He wants the money to tell you that he ain't gonna buy food with. He's gonna buy drugs, booze, or sex or something. And I've done that countless times, and I've only had two people take me on the offer. And both of them were very thankful as I left them with a gospel track as they one sat in a booth and the other one, you know, uh, I paid out money. And she had, I told the guys, you know, let her get a sandwich, let her get a drink. And I don't know with anything else besides that. I think she donors, whatever it was. I told the guy, I said, here's the money. And if I owe you anything else, you know, I, I the store is part of my account. I said, I'll pay you tomorrow. But nothing else. And he told me that that's exactly what you told her, exactly what she got. And I got the change back. Now that is somebody who's poor and that is someone who's needy. Now somebody comes with you, grab a couple dollars, and they won't go into a place and get a soda or whatever they want. They're not poor and needy. They are just, I don't know what you call it. Then it was well with him. Was not this to know me, saith the Lord. So you've got to use your money wisely when it comes to people. Even people that come up and say, hey, I need a couple dollars. You've got to judge. Judge not least you be judged. All right, you give your money away foolishly. 
And if, if I can make an insight note here outside of your Bible, if you want some education, watch the people's court. On how many people has foolishly given money to someone and they don't get it back or they don't get the services rendered thereof? You didn't judge that person very well. Well, how am I supposed to judge him? Put it in writing. Exactly what that money is for. But thine eyes, thy heart, are not but for thy covetousness. The him and the he of 1516 is someone else maybe the king's father he was doing right for God you gotta go back and, and study the kings here find out what, which ones did right which ones didn't do right but this king right now is one is not doing right by God and he's not doing nothing he's supposed to be doing he has even built his house without wages And for to shed innocent blood. He's a murderer. And the message is to Zedekiah. I believe Josiah was one of the good, good kings. For oppression. Wait a minute. But thy eyes and thy heart are not but for thy covetousness. I got to build a bigger house. And for the shed innocent blood. And for oppression. Let's go back to verse 3. Thus saith the Lord, execute ye judgment, talking to the king, and righteousness, and deliver the spoil out of the hand of the oppressor. He is talking to Zedekiah. This is Nathan walking up to David saying, Thou art the man. The oppression is Zedekiah and the people. And for violence to do it. Not only does he think about it, but he practices it. Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning Jehoiakim. The son of Josiah, king of Judah, they shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, oh, my brother, or ah, oh, sister. I don't know why they say sister. He's a boy. Unless he's just talking about the family in general. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, oh, Lord. That's a, smell, that's a small L. You know, Lord, Lord is a king. The ruler, or ah, his glory. He's not going to get no ah. Uh, he shall be buried with the burial of an ass. No ceremony. Dead animal, carted off. You know, you know what happens if you touch a dead animal? You are unclean to even after you, until you watch. Drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem, down the dump, where dead animals are cast. Go up to Lebanon and cry. Lift up thy voice in Bashan and cry for the passages, for all thy lovers are destroyed. Well, Lebanon helped. They brought them cedars to build the temple. I, God, spake unto thee in thy prosperity. But thou sayest, I will not hear. This has been thy manner from thy youth, that thou obeyest not my voice. And that's exactly what they're teaching the kids in the public school system today. From their you.
There are some churches out there teaching the youth the worldly ways that don't honor God. The wind shall eat up all thy pastors. What is the wind? Can you draw a picture of the wind? Can you see the wind? So, pretty much nothing is going to eat up the pastors. And the Bible speaks of an east wind that brings certain weather conditions of, of death, of dryness. It's a weather change. And thy lovers shall go into captivity. Surely thou shalt thou surely then shalt thou be ashamed and confronted for all thy wickedness. O inhabitant of Lebron, that makest thy nest in the cedars. That's what they trusted in. That's what their home was. Selling cedars. Oh, kill a tree. How gracious. You know, they talk about, oh, all the cedar trees that they killed in Lebanon. Oh, me, I've heard say, mean Solomon for the temple. They killed. Yeah, but there's still cedars over there today. Evidently, you know, they didn't cry out the whole forest. They planted new and they knew what to cut and how many to cut. They, they knew. How gracious shalt thou be when pangs come upon thee, the pain as of a woman in travail. And when God wants to mention a horrible uh, a man that can't understand pain. And even today, 5% of the women in America don't go through this pain because you've got, you know, medication. But when you get to third world countries, when a woman doesn't have a hospital care and that, and she goes through the pain... The Bible's most unbearable pain that it shows is a woman giving birth to a child. And it's likened to the destruction of, of Jerusalem. It is likened to the, to the times of Jacob's trouble. Paragraph. Important paragraph. As I, God, live, saith the Lord. Though Kaniah, who he dropped the J-E right off his name, was Jeconiah. J-E, Jehovah. He dropped the J-E, the Jehovah part of his name. He dropped it off, Kaniah. The son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the signet upon my right hand. If you were on my right hand, yet would I pluck thee thence. Well, that comes a long way from, from a Christian in the New Testament. He said, I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. I will give thee into the hand of them that seek thy life. Ooh. And into the hand of them whose face thou fearest. Like some people lost their salvation in the wrong book. You think you can lose it. Even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of Chaldeans. He's afraid. He's afraid of the Babylonians coming. And are there. I will cast thee out, and thy mother that bare thee, into another country, where ye were where ye were not born, and there shall ye die. So rest assured when you when you are departed out of this land you ain't coming back. But to the land whereunto they desire to return, thither shall they not return. You're not coming back. Is this man, Kaniah, a despised, broken idol? Is he a vessel where he is no pleasure? To God. Wherefore are they cast out? He and his seed, his children, 
and are cast into a land which they know not. Why? Because of their sins. Because of their wickedness. Now ready. O earth. O earth. Earth. O earth. 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 O Ham, Japheth, and Shem. Twenty nine is written to all the people of the earth, even though they don't know that there are people in North America, South America, and Central America. O earth. Earth, earth, what are they told? Hear the word of the Lord. Jeremiah becomes the first worldwide prophet. Thus saith the Lord, Write ye this man childless, Kaniah. His children are going to die. And he won't have any other children. Write this, write ye this man child, a man that shall not prosper in his days. He's going to die, death. For no man of His seed from the Genesis 3 real quick very rarely do we jump to another verse in the Bible but read the Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 because this needs to be met Genesis 3 15 his seed shall prosper Genesis 3:15 And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed A woman has no seed the seed is man back to Jeremiah Jeremiah is not going to have any male children anymore the ones that he has are going to die shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David no man of Kaniah or Je Jeconiah is going to sit on the throne of David anymore yet God promised David and how can David fulfill this curse Written about Kaniah in Jeremiah 22, 29, and 30. Genesis 3.15. This is the prophecy of the virgin birth. How does God take this curse and use it to say, I have a covenant to David. I've got to sit my son upon the throne of David and yet I cursed this man I made it impossible for anybody now of that kingly line of Judah to ever sit on the throne how am I going to do that I am going to give a woman a seed I am going to have her virgin born of the Holy Spirit It's going to come upon her and that it and when you run the line of Mary in Luke chapter 3 she comes of David but not Solomon. So the line of Jesus Christ of David goes from David to Jesus Christ and from Solomon all the way to Jeconiah. It's gone. Of Nathan, yeah. It would be the name of the prophet that told him, Thou art the man. 
Jeremiah 22, 29, and 30 tells you there's going to be no more king after this one in Jerusalem anymore except for Jesus Christ. One of the minor prophecies about there'll be no king, no priest, no ephod. The virgin birth has to be, according to Jeremiah 22, 29, and 30, because the kingly line of Judah is wiped out, gone, forgotten. See you later. It's vile. Now I gotta do something special, God says. It's anything too hard for me. No. We're getting down to the end of Jeremiah. We're getting down to the end of Judah. We're getting down to the end of the kings. When, Bab when Babylon comes the third time, it's destroyed. When Nehemiah and Ezra come, they rebuild the temple, they rebuild the city, but they don't bring a king. When Jesus Christ comes and walks in that temple that is built, there's no king. They have a Caesar. And it's funny because the Jews say, we have no king but Caesar. You ain't got no king. And upon the cross it is written in three languages, O earth, 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 written in Hamitenish, Latin, written in Japheth, Greek, written in Hebrew, Shem. And what does it say? The king of the Jews. They haven't seen that title in about 33 and a half A.D. to about, let's see, what's the object? No, oh, it should be when it was written, Jeremiah 52. Uh, let's see if we find a date here. Jeremiah 52, I have 588 B.C., 595 B.C. So over 500 years, they haven't seen a king title in, Ju in the land, and they reject Jesus Christ as the king for Rome. So you know who the ones running around there right now in their little back suits? Telling, here's the place where Jesus did this. Here's the place where Jesus did that. Here is the skull of baby John the Baptist. Here's the skull of adult John the Baptist. Here is Mary's breast milk. Here is the, the wing or the, the feather of. Here's a bunch of phonies ruling in their land. Why? Because we have no king but Caesar. And then when next time you see Jesus, what's he wearing? King of kings and Lord of lords. And he comes down, picks up those Jewish people, heads himself into Jerusalem, and sits down upon the throne of David for all eternity, sitting as the king of the Jews. That is why Jesus Christ had to have been born of a virgin, because Mr. Nice Guy Kaniah, who was, you see when I told you in Kaniah he dropped the J-E? You're not even going to reference my name to this man. This man is so wicked and so vile, the curse upon him, you're not going to have Jehovah upon him. So later on, over 500 years later, 30, you know, give or take, I'll bring the Jehe back. And I'll call it Jesus. God saved. Jehovah saved. I'm just seeing if they had a what can I mean? I don't have it here. 